Ivan was a man of contradictions, embodying both the highest ideals of rulership and the darkest impulses of tyranny. On the one hand, he was a visionary leader who sought to expand the boundaries of his realm and establish Russia as a major power in Europe. He was a patron of the arts and a champion of the Orthodox Church, and he worked tirelessly to bring order and stability to his country. On the other hand, Ivan was also known for his cruel and unpredictable temper, and for the many atrocities that were committed in his name. He was responsible for the massacre of thousands of his own subjects, and for the purges that swept through the noble classes of Russia. He was feared by his enemies and by his own people, and his legacy has been shaped by the horror stories that have been passed down through the centuries. These days, a bad meal can be as terrible as a natural disaster that kills millions. The 16th century Russian Tsar Ivan IV was given this nickname, which carried the connotations of awe-inspiring, powerful, and formidable. Looking back on the rule of one of the most paranoid, bloodthirsty, and unpredictable men the country has ever known, maybe today's definition of extremely bad isn't so far off after all. So, what exactly turned Ivan into such a horrible person? The seed of Ivan's horrible character was planted in his dreadful upbringing. Ivan lost both his parents early in life, his mother at age 8 and his father, Vasily, Grand Prince of Moscow, at age 3. As a result, the young prince was used as a pawn in power struggles between various noble families, most notably the powerful Shuisky and Bileski clans. Although the royal court was in a state of dangerous chaos due to murder and intrigue, Ivan and his deaf-mute brother Yuri were regarded like two street urchins. We hope you enjoy your visit to Hallmark History, where the past is reinterpreted in fresh and engaging ways. We begin our exploration of the mysterious and controversial life and reign of Ivan IV, Tsar of Russia, today. His legacy is marked by paradoxes, which are reflected in his nickname, Ivan the Terrible. Ivan IV's violent tactics and purges, as well as his big plan to enlarge the Russian Empire, have made him a controversial figure even today. Who, though, was this mysterious individual behind the name? All right, let's check it out. Ivan and his sibling were sometimes left with nothing to wear and starved. They nurtured me like a wanderer and a child of the poorest, Ivan wrote to Prince Andrei Kurbsky. What have I endured without clothing and food? Ivan hated the nobility because he was disregarded and used as a political football. When he became Tsar, his abuse haunted Ivan's noble relatives in a dramatic way. That was all in the future. Ivan ripped living birds' feathers and hurled dogs and cats out of windows since he couldn't get revenge on his tormentors. 13-year-old Ivan got teeth. The Shuisky family became Russia's de facto ruler after defeating the Belsky family for prince control. The long-neglected boy surprised them. Ivan imprisoned and murdered Prince Andrei, the most powerful Shuisky, at a feast in 1453 for mismanaging the nation. Some say Andre was killed by greedy hunting dogs, but his captors probably thrashed him. Ivan gained complete control on his 16th birthday. Anastasia was his first wife. Ivan's reign began well. It was mostly peaceful. He established regional self-governance, and a standing army, and modernized his grandfather's penal code. Ivan built St. Basil's Cathedral and introduced printing presses to Russia after conquering Kazan. Ivan was so touched by the cathedral that he blinded the architect so he could never make something as beautiful again. There is no proof that Ivan blinded anyone, but the fact that many people still believe he did tells something about his reputation. Two occurrences in 1558 and 1560 turned Ivan into a despot. First, Prince Kurbsky's betrayal. The nobility fled to Lithuania after Ivan's failed 1558 Livonia invasion. When Kurbsky led the Lithuanian army and defeated Russia with Poland and Sweden, Ivan was furious and felt that his country's nobility was out to get him. His wife Anastasia died in 1560. Ivan believed his enemies poisoned his wife. Even though no poison was found, the Tsarina's bones showed extremely high mercury levels in the 20th century suggesting that the paranoid young ruler may have been right. After his wife's death and his friend's betrayal, Ivan escaped to Alexandrov, 120 kilometers northeast of Moscow. He wrote two resignation letters here. 
after his council of nobles and clergymen failed to rule in his absence, an envoy begged Ivan to reconsider. He agreed to do so if he could seize the lands of his betrayers and execute everyone he suspected of treason. The weak council and clergy obeyed Ivan. A costly mistake. Impalement, boiling alive, roasting over an open fire, and limb tearing were popular execution methods. Ivan returned to Moscow to divide the nation into two administrative regions. The nobility ruled one, while Ivan ruled the Oprishnina as he saw fit. Later, he tortured and killed most of his political opponents and those who opposed him. Ivan created the Oprichtniki to govern his domain. Ivan's Oprichtniki, the Tsar's personal enforcers, patrolled the newly constituted realm in black. Ivan let the Oprichtniki torture and murder traitors. The Oprichtniki were hired thugs that the Oprishnina hated and feared. They rode with cut dog heads on their saddles to symbolize traitor detection. In the Oprishnina's towns and villages, peasants, the middle class, and aristocrats fled for their lives as word of the Oprichniki spread. Despicable Oprichniki. Ivan tortured and murdered unfaithful people. Impaling, boiling, roasting, and horse tearing were popular execution methods. The fate of Novgorod, Russia's second largest city and Moscow's biggest competitor, showed how dangerous life was in Ivan and the Oprichniki's region. In 1570, Ivan attacked the city because he felt its officials, clergy, and most influential inhabitants were plotting against him. Priests and monks were kidnapped and killed while their churches and monasteries were pillaged. After torture and execution, famous businessmen, bureaucrats, and noblemen were burnt alive in special frying pans. Their spouses and children too perished slowly and cruelly. They were chained and thrown into the Volga River. Soldiers using axes, boat hooks, and spears drowned fleeing victims in cold waters. Novgorod took generations to recover from the invasion. The Oprichniki were ordered to take all profitable commodities and burn storehouses and businesses, targeting low-class merchants. All resistors and many non-resistors were slain. The poor suffered too. The city was full of impoverished peasants seeking labor after a succession of famines. The merchants and their families evicted these impoverished people from the city, leaving them to starve and freeze in the harsh Russian winter. Bloodshed and destruction in Novgorod killed 12,000 people. The raid devastated the city's governmental and religious buildings, murdered famous individuals, reduced its commercial area to a shell, and seized most of its wealth, making it no longer Russia's second city. Most of the survivors left the wreckage for better lives. Novgorod would never again challenge Moscow, and it would take decades to recover. Novgorod shows Ivan's brutal conquest. He was a sack of the city and kill everyone type of ruler for many years. Ivan the Terrible threatened even his family. The Novgorod slaughter silenced the Oprichniki. Before the city fell, Ivan suspected its leaders of scheming against him. Ivan also believed the Oprichtniki were untrustworthy after they failed to stop a Tartar raid on Moscow. The gang was dismantled and many leaders were executed in 1571. After 1572, naming Oprichnina was a capital offense. Ivan's unrelenting warfare, ruthless treatment of his own people, assaults on the clergy, nobility, and middle classes, torture and execution of his enemies, and stealing of the country's resources brought the Russian economy to its knees. As Ivan aged, his mental health worsened. He beat his pregnant daughter-in-law so badly in 1581 that she miscarried. One of his ultimate brutalities. After his unborn kid died, Ivan's second son confronted him. Ivan struck his son so hard that he fell and died. Ivan always carried a sharpened baton to punish anyone who angered him. Ivan the Terrible threatened even his family. In 1584, Ivan, 53, died of a stroke while playing chess with a companion. His middle son, Fyodor, who died childless in 1598, inherited his father's throne and plunged Russia into the time of troubles. The fact that Ivan killed his own son in addition to his subjects and the residents of the towns and cities he overran makes him a horrible ruler in both the traditional and modern definitions of the word. From 1558 onward, as his paranoia increased and his mental health deteriorated, he became into a horrible tyrant who left death, 
destruction, and economic ruin in his wake. Sadly, Ivan, the Terrible lived up to his moniker. Ivan IV's violent tactics and purges, as well as his big plan to enlarge the Russian Empire, have made him a controversial figure even today. Whether you think of him as a cruel dictator or a visionary reformer, Ivan IV of Russia is one of the most intriguing and mysterious individuals in global history. Although he was a product of his period, his legacy in Russia and the wider world will be studied and debated for years to come. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe. We invite you to join us on this adventure, as we have many more exciting stories from the past to share. Please acknowledge my appreciation.